Hi guys, welcome to Creations by Karen. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to make this really cute baseball wreath. So let's get started. You're going to need a few things before we get started today. You're going to need a 8 inch circular wreath form. I get these at Dollar Tree here in London, Ontario, Canada. Um, and they're two for $1.25. You're going to need a piece of plastic mesh uh, because we're going to cut out a piece for the inside of the wreath. You're going to need a pair of needle nose pliers, something to cut tie wraps with, a pair of scissors, and something to pinch punch holes in the wreath, in the um, foam board. Okay? You're also going to need an oil based paint marker. And, and you're going to need some mesh. Now, I live in Canada. We certainly don't have the mesh um, like they have available in the States. So I got this particular mesh at my local dollar store. Um, it's not the best mesh. Um, and I have to double it um, in order to make the color pop during um, the making of the wreath. Um, and I do use a wood burner to cut the mesh. I know a lot of people use scissors and that's fine. This particular mesh frays really badly when using scissors and that's why I use a wood burner. A couple of things with using a wood burner is that it's really important to cover your face and your mouth if you're um, cutting a lot of mesh and make sure that your pets are not um, in the area when you're doing that. Apparently it's quite toxic to pets. Okay, so let's get started. Oh, and you're gonna need some zip ties. I get these at my local Home Depot and they, I think they're like $23 for a bag of a thousand, which is very reasonable. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your wreath form, place it on your piece of mesh, and you're going to trace the inside um, of this particular wreath form on this mesh and then just cut it out. All right, and then you are going to place it on the wreath form using some tie wraps and I use the six tie wraps to adhere my mesh to my wreath form. I like to make a template for my wreath petals uh, placement. Um, so what I did is just took a piece of cardboard and I just marked where I wanted to have the, wreath, the petals placed and then I just used my hole punch to punch out the um, marks that I'd made and then I just apply it onto my mesh like this and then just with my oil base marker I just went ahead to um, dot wherever I wanted a mesh or where I wanted the mesh to be placed um, and that works really well for me especially for making more than one of these um, this is a very popular wreath for me so I wanted to be able to make a lot of them if I needed to and this saved a lot of time and energy as well okay so uh, I've placed my mesh onto my wreath form like this once again it is tie wrapped on it and then I've also placed the tie wraps on it that um, I was going to be um, putting the mesh through I have put eight uh, tie wraps on each section of these and in this particular wreath form there's only three rungs and you want to use the second rung um, from the outside to place your tie wraps and then everywhere that I placed a dot for my petal placement I put a tie wrap on as well so this just makes everything seem a little bit faster right so I'm just going to put that aside for a second and I'm going to show you how to uh, fold the mesh now we are using just a regular standard sunflower petal I believe it's called a Dean Michaels petal so once again here's my six inch piece of mesh because my rolls of mesh are only six inches so I just wanted to make a square so I used my wood burner and I made six inch squares um, it has a finished edge on both sides but my wood burner actually finishes the other sides really well so there's very little fray when you make these I mean you're always going to have a little bit of fray but certainly not like you would have if you use scissors so you're going to place your mesh down and see how it curls sort of this way so you want to place that down in a diamond shape with your finished edges right and left and then you're going to come to the middle and you're just going to scrunch from one side to the other so it looks like a bow tie and then you're going to place pull the bottom over top of the top piece 
So this is what the look it looks like once you have it made. Now I really like to make a lot of them at one time, um, especially if I'm just watching TV or something. So what I do is I get a little elastic and I place it around the bottom part of the wreath or the uh, petal. So like that. And you can get uh, 500 of these small um, elastics at Dollar Tree for like $1.25. So that's a very nice time saver and very inexpensive to do. So I'm going to show you another one. So once again, curling down, come into the middle, scrunch it in this way and this way, and then just turn the bottom to the top like this, and then place a small rubber band on it. Like this. And that really holds it well and makes it really easy to slide into the tie wraps. Just going to do one more. Curl, eyed, curl side down, come into the middle, scrunch up, and scrunch down. And then just take your bottom, fold it over the top, like this, and then place your rubber band on it. Now I've gone ahead and made all the petals the same way for the entire wreath. So we're just going to go ahead and start putting them in. All right. So you just take your petal and it doesn't matter where you start on this particular wreath. But you just want to make sure that all the finished edges of your petals are running in the same direction. And I'll show you what that means in a few minutes when I get a few of them put in. Okay, so. First one's always a little bit trickiest. Okay, so you're just going to take your petal, slide it in your wreath form. And in this particular wreath, the bottom of the petal is just hitting the inside rung. Take my zip tie. Puller, little nose pliers. Once you have it in the place that you want it, you can just go ahead and put your other petals in. Um, I wait until I've got them all in on the outside before I clip them off. That's just a preference of mine. You certainly can go ahead and clip them off as you go. I just, this is time saving for me. So I just go ahead and place all the petals in. Now I'm making um, a wreath with the Toronto Blue Jays colors. Um, I live in Ontario, Canada. Blue Jays are very popular here. So that's what I thought I needed to do. Um, and this works the same way. I mean, you can use these colors for the Toronto Maple Leafs as well. Basically, you just need to pick the colors of your team, your favorite team, and then go ahead and cut the mesh in those colors. And whenever I see sort of little bits of fray, I just go ahead and cut them as I'm going along. And that just saves me going around and clipping those off as, at the end. So once again, I'm going to put eight petals in each section of the wreath form. There's three different sections. If you're using a bigger wreath form, you're going to just have to need more petals. All right. Eight inch works really well for me. Um, fits on most doors really well. And this also fits between two doors if you are using a screen door as well. Want to make sure all the petals are basically the same size and that's what my first section looks like having all the petals placed i'm going to go ahead, go ahead and finish the other two sections here and then i'm going to go through and clip all my tie wraps off 
Now, I, I really like to use tie rods because it's a very easy, quick way to apply the mesh. Um, certainly, you can use um, Chanel stems if you like. This is just a time saver for me. And when you can get them in bulk and they're fairly inexpensive, I think it works out to less than a penny um, every time you use one. My time saver is well worth that amount of money. And certainly you can do this with the colors of any sports team that you're um, that you enjoy watching. Toronto, Maple, uh, Toronto Blue Jays and Toronto Maple Leafs are very popular here in Ontario, Canada. So that's why I did this one. So you're going to need, in total, you're going to need 24 of the navy colored petals for this particular wreath. And when, as you can see, when you have them all prepared and ready to go with a little bit of, with the small elastics, it works up really quickly. And one more for this section. I was really kind of excited to find this mesh at my local Dollar Tree. Um, I was able to get pastel mesh at my local Dollarama. Uh, right around Easter time, um, which works great. I mean, as long as you double it, because it certainly isn't premium mesh. Oops. I forgot to put tie wraps on these ones. I'm just going to go ahead and put these tie wraps on. So I use four inch tie wraps. And you just come down and just need eight of them. And I put them on and snug them up, but allow um, some room to put the Pedal in. I'm just going to put eight of these in here. There's actually one on, but just two. Three. Four. And it's really trial and error to decide how many petals you need to put in each section. Once again, if you are using um, a, like a bigger, like a, a 10 inch wreath form, then you would need uh, eight extra petals because you have another section of your wreath form. I just like the size of the eight inch. Um, it's good for a front door. It's good for an apartment door. This is great for a child's room if they're big fans of the Toronto Blue Jays or the Toronto Maple Leafs. Okay, so I'll just slip, start slipping these in. And just once again, you just want to make sure that all the petals are approximately the same size. I mean, certainly this is a flower um, wreath, I guess, um, just with a different center. Um, and no petals and flowers are perfect, and this certainly wouldn't be. But I just kind of like to make things as cohesive as I can. Perfectionist, I guess. Plus, if I'm selling them, I want them to look as as good as I can.
and one more. So when you put your last petal in on the row, just want to tuck the unfinished edge underneath the finished edge of the petal next to it. I'm just going to go ahead and clip all this excess off. It's really important to have a small little container to put all your garbage bits on. So you have 24 total petals because you're putting <clears throat> eight in each section of this particular reform. And that uses two rolls of mesh, um, six inch mesh, because once again, I do, I do double it. So I have to use a little bit extra in order just to make the colors pop and be vibrant because that's important. Okay, then you're going to just go through and turn all these um, heads of the zip ties to the side so they're not standing up. You'll notice it if you don't do it because your next row of petals won't sit quite as flat. Okay, so that's what my first row of petals look like placed onto my wreath form. And as you can see, all the finished edges are running in the same direction and covering the unfinished edge of the petal previous. So I'm going to go ahead and put my next row of petals in. I'm using light blue for this one. And I'm just going to place it into the tie wraps that I've had placed onto the mesh. And you want it to be about, about an inch down. And there's 16 of these. Once again, it was just trial and error deciding how many I needed to put in. 16 worked for me. You certainly can put as many in as you like. And I try to have the placement as even as possible. Once again, you always want to make sure that the finished edge of your petal putting down is uh, covering the unfinished edge of the petal that was done previously. That makes sense. And as you can see, this works up really quickly when you have all your petals already made. So the colors of the Toronto Blue Jays, of course, are navy blue, white, and uh, a little bit of lighter blue, and that's why I've chosen this one, and this is what was available. should say that they have these sets of um, tools at Michael's. Uh, comes in a box like this. 
and has a couple of uh, sets of needle nose pliers, a cutter. Um, there's a couple of other uh, things you can use in there. Um, I think it was $16. It did use a 55% off coupon. Um, so it was very reasonable and it had all the things in it that I needed. And the fact that I have, I mean, I have small hands. So wielding a big um, wire cutter, I mean, I have them here, but I didn't want to uh, have to use it. So I did go out and spend the money, which is fine. But I use it every day, so well worth it. Two more. <clears throat> Once again, you just want to make sure that your e your petals are placed the same length and width apart. Last one. I'm just going to take this unfinished edge and tuck it under the finished edge of the first petal I put in. I'm going to take my needle, your zip tie cutter. I mean, certainly you can use a pair of scissors. Um, before I went and got these, I was using cuticle cutters and it worked really well as well. <clears throat> so you just work with what you have. I mean, I, I try to make things as easy as possible since I do a lot of wreath making. Um, but if you're only making a couple of wreaths a year, certainly just go out and make or just use what you have at home. Scissors work. You don't want to use good scissors doing it, but just <clears throat> older scissors you have laying around. And so you're just going to turn, once again, your, your tie wrap head to the side so it's not standing up. Just want to snug this one up a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so that's what my second row looks like. So you have your navy on the outside and blue on the inside. And the last row is going to be white. I do cut these inside tie wraps uh, down a little bit so that the sort of necks of them aren't as long because they just kind of get in the way. So after I place them all, I just kind of go in and just trim them up a bit. That's just my preference. You certainly don't need to do that. Just makes things a little bit easier putting things together. And I'm all about finding the easiest way. And the last one going in. And certainly at this point, once you get this last one in, you can sort of fluff out the petals a bit so they're covering everything. So always remember that these petals are covering the tie wraps and the elastics on the previous row. Now, these elastics will disintegrate in time, so you don't need to worry about that. Just going to cut these off. Okay. 
There's the inside. Okay, so um, once again, I'm going to take my tie wraps. I'm going to move the heads to one side because the next thing I'm going to do is place the centerpiece on it. I'm just going to put this aside for a moment. So I've made this uh, baseball centerpiece for it. Um, and all I did was took a styrofoam ball, cut it in half, applied white paint to it. Um, and then once paint was dry, I just drew the uh, lines in the ball stitching, I guess you could call it. Um, waited for that to dry. And then I had some uh, glitter glue. So I applied some glitter glue to it just to give it a little bit of shine. And then I put Mod Podge on it to seal everything. So to affix it to my wreath form, I just placed a chenille stem and I took some floral wire cut it into very small pieces and made a U with it. And I used those to adhere the Chanel stem to the back of the centerpiece. Um, for a little extra protection, I just took a small piece of foam, hot glued it onto my back. And then I also put four more, um, four more of the U's through there. So this is what it looks like, okay? And all I'm going to do is apply this to my wreath form. So you always want to make sure you have this in the center of the form. So I'm going to go down this side and this side because it's directly across from each other. And then I'm just going to pull it nice and snug. Like this. And then turn it over and give it a nice twist to keep it snug and in place. And just clip it off. And just place that down. Now you can go ahead and just hang this on your door like this and it would be perfectly fine. I like to finish my um, wreaths as I'm going so I'm going to put a hanger on it. Um, uh, my cat's been up here so that's a bit of a challenge. Excuse me one moment I just gotta rescue something. Well, I don't know where it is. My cat has taken off his things. Oh, here it is, here. So I just took a pipe cleaner, Chanel stem. I just come down and twist to make a loop like that. Okay, and now it's important to have the baseball sort of facing up, that's just me. Um, so I kind of look to see where I want it. This looks like a good spot for me. So I'm just gonna come into the back pull these right through and then I'm going to wrap around the outside wreath form like this and just give it a twist and just cut the excess off like that <clears throat> and you can just use this to hang it and it's perfectly fine. Now, one more thing I like to do because I am selling these wreaths is just to take a piece of light foam. I take my hole punch. I punch holes all around the outside of it. And then I just place it on the form like this. And then I'll tie wrap it all in place. Okay. Um, but I'm not going to spend the time doing that today. So that is your uh, baseball wreath uh, with the Toronto Blue Jays colors.
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel because I do crafts every Thursday and every Sunday, both for inside and outside your home. Have a great afternoon, everyone. I'll talk to you soon. Bye now.